welcome to my YouTube channel, Julie Menial Crafts. So, this is something that I have considered doing as a little mini series on my YouTube channel for quite some time. Um, I have a handful of art books. I don't have many. The ones I have, I dip in and out of. They are my happy place. I've never actually sat and read this, like, for example, beginning to end. Have read lots of it. Definitely been very inspired by it. Um, Art books for me are sort of where I de-stress. You know, sometimes if you lose your mojo, you can just have a little bit of a flick through. Um, yeah, as I said, a cup of tea, just a bit of time to de-stress from the world. I definitely love um, my art books. I think I have about five. I've actually got another one, but I can't find it just now. Um, so I thought what I will do is create a little mini series. I will look at the book, not in great detail, because obviously for Danielle Donaldson who wrote this book, she would probably put months and months of work into this and to then show everything um, wouldn't be fair. <laughs> but maybe I can whet your appetite with what you do share. So my most favourite thing about this book was this section here, creative challenges. I've just uh, postmarked these just so that I don't um, miss them. So she's like, creative challenges are a way to grow your skills and connect with your friends across miles at the same time. Some of my favourite pieces have been created based on challenges just like these. Now actually, I love doing my challenge with Don and Julia Cree. I love doing my take five. So I naturally gravitate towards um, challenges. That wasn't a deliberate choice after having read this book. I've, I've only just, that's just dawned on me now. Um, but yeah, it's probably why I've connected with this particular bit. Um, it helps you to focus on uh, specific skills, stretch you out of your comfort zone. Um, each of these channel cha challenge includes specific mediums or techniques, an inspirational quote, theme or music, blah, blah, blah. What I love about these challenge is that she has you listening to music and I think that is really really interesting to see how what music you've been asked to listen to and um, how that influences what you create so obviously I'm not going to be doing one of these challenges on the video because it does require listening to music but for example um, art challenge number three draw or paint from a viewpoint in a quote with your friends go to medium whilst listening to nature music and making your favourite colour the dominant colour. Um, so yeah, I think I think they're really, really good. Um, for example here, um, paint on a surface you don't normally use with only one brush whilst listening to your friend's favourite band, completing your work in less than an hour. So they're just a bit quirky and I just think that, I, I love that. Um, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Now, I've bookmarked this. I think this is swatching. Yeah, so this is really easy and creative swatching. I would just totally encourage people that if you are going to have watercolours or any form of medium, you should really swatch your work. The way I like, I like to do little puddles. I actually do it based on what I saw. Um, I think it's at James Burke. Um, so I like to do these sort of little things where I just put a bit of water and then obviously this is so this is the Jane Davenport Brights. So I've got fairy tale butterfly and 70s eyeshadow in there. I can sort of see the sort of blend that they make. Um, so sometimes it's fine swatching it out like that, but you need to know how they play together. Um, so that's almost like a mini version of what she did here. Again, not a conscien conscious decision to follow that, but it really good. I like that a lot. Um, the other thing that I really love about this book is yes, it teaches you sketching, it teaches you watercolours, but she takes it onto a crafter's level. And obviously, that is where my passion is. I do enjoy using my watercolours, but I prefer crafting. So we've got it here, which has got you on birch panels. I love this. It's like stitching, and then she's got the what she's watercolouring over something that's already been stitched. I mean, the texture on that is going to be brilliant not something I've tried but I feel I want to just reminding myself of it and this is why I like it for like lost mojo and things that sometimes you just you see something and it just gives you a little bit of an idea like I love this we've got watercolour in the background we've got stitch detail we've got paper we've got lace loads of different things so um what I've decided to do is there is an ex there's quite a few exercises projects in the back where she gives you step by step projects to do um, so I thought we'd work on this one together. As much as I'm tempted by the challenges, if anyone fancies doing a challenge with me, let me know. I think that could be quite fun. 
Um, yeah. So anyhow, this is um, the Choo Choo Girl. So I'm going to grab some watercolour paper and work my way through this project to see what my results are. I absolutely love this book. Out of all my books, this is probably oh, the my most favourite one and um, probably why I've started with it. So um, I'm just going to get my supplies together and let's have a little look at how we get on creating our tutu girl. Okay, so I have set up my board there. I've actually taped it to a glass and mat just so that if I do end up getting impatient and wanting to use the heat gun on it, then uh, I'm not going to damage my um, workspace. Um, I've got my Jane Davenpoint Davenport Paint Till You Faint because that's one of my favourite palettes and I've also got Decadent Pies by Prima because it's got some good skin tones in there and obviously we're doing a girl. So, um, it's supposed to be 6 by 6 inch paper, mine's slightly bigger because um, I'm wanting to put it in my handmade journal. So I want to put it in that once it's done, so um, I'll probably just cut it in half once I've done it. I think I've got this on the wrong side, I'm on the smooth side, but that's okay. Right, so sketch a fi figure, um, draw the sides of the chin of the tutu girl's head, her neck and an upside down U shape. So, I'm just going to move this to the side because we're not painting yet. I'm just going to pop my book up there so that I can refer to it and hopefully you can still see the screen. Right, so um, I'm going to go for the, have her in the corner I think. And let's have her higher up so that we've got, um, do you know, I don't sketch, a sketching is something I've done privately, it's not anything that I've done, um, <laughs> done on camera yet. So, um, the sides of her chin, her neck and an upside down, so we'll go for her neck there, like so. Now this will be interesting because I obviously I have my style of sketching and this is going to be different and an upside down U, which is there. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Um, there we go. So, um, draw her neck. Add a few loose scribbles to give you a general indication of her tutu. So I think my U is too wide. So I need to bring that like so. I've got gel rubber on the end. It's not the best one, so let's hope it doesn't damage the paper too much. Alright. When I sketch, I'm definitely one that does an awful lot of erasing. <laughs> right, and then a few sort of general, so just sort of some general squigglies. I know I want it to go over the page, round the page. Mine's going to be quite a big girl. Okay. Right. So she's actually sort of got... Um, features, she's not mentioned it but she's got features sort of drawn in so I know my eyes are going to, so when you do your features you sort of put a cross in the face, the eyes are halfway in the cross so I'm just sort of doing a little shape and then I do like a little tiny U and then for the mouth I'm just halfway between the nose and the chin and just sort of drawing a little M and then bringing that together so that'll be That'll be roughly for me. And then she has sort of sketched in a little bit of hair. So I'm going to do the same. So remember to bring the hair quite a bit down the forehead because otherwise it looks a bit daft, personally, in my opinion. And I'm going to give her a very loose hairstyle as well. And we'll have her hair floating up there. Okay. I don't know if you can see that at all. But I hope so. Right. Uh, this is weird because this is not how I work. But this is the whole point in having books and things like this, um, is it gives you gives you challenges. Right, so that's me got my sketch done. Number two, add a loose wash of yellow and orange forming her hair. So let's get started with that. I'll bring my paints over a little bit so you can sort of see what I'm doing. So let's, I like to just spray over my paints with just a spray bottle, get them all sort of kind of activated. Um, I don't mind that they run into each other because, you know, when you play they run into each other as well. So automatically when she said yellow, I'm thinking this, but I might actually start off with one of those yellows as well. I should probably get myself so, a paintbrush as well. Yellow and orange. So I'm going to go for this and very loosely, I need to bring my water closer to me. So she was saying it's a loose... 
so we don't want to go too heavy at this stage so I'm also using um, Arteza um, this one here Arteza cold pressed dual sided acid free um, watercolour paper I've used their paper before and it's pretty good so I'm quite happy with that so let's get this loose layer of yellow on um, and we'll see how we go I'm, what I may do is I might sort of gradually put some sped up bits in some of the stages because like doing a watercolour painting does take time um, and then sort of come back to you in between the stages when I'm reading the instructions but we'll see how we'll see how we go so I've got that loose bit of yellow on there and she said orange as well I don't have a definite orange in this palette but we will um, I might add some of the peach we've got this one I reckon if we water that down quite a bit we could have a orangey tone yeah that's fairly pale once we get that on so um, I'm thinking of the shadow areas which are going to be under her neck because obviously as it goes out it's going to get lighter okay so that's us that's us made a start I've never actually worked through any of it I mean I've enjoyed perusing this book but I've never actually sort of um, looking at her picture there I, I've gone quite loose but looking at her picture there that part is actually quite bright so I am going to drop I started off with the natural colours but let's face it I'm somebody who loves my colours so I'm going to drop some of this um, buzzy yellow in from Jane Davenport and just drop it in now there's obviously water on that so it's going to move in amongst what's already there but I think that could be quite good and I think I might just drop a bit here as well I'm just tapping it in a few places and then I'm just going to let it travel and do its thing on the page. I think that's quite cool. Right, two, add loose watercolour. Add, um, oh we've done that, right, okay, change, add a second wash of blues, teals and purples to her tutu. Okay, so let's get some... I'm going to put water down first. I like to add water and just because it, it starts to move and do its own thing. I probably could do with a bigger brush for covering this amount of space, to be honest. Right. So I'm going to drop in so that she's seen blues. What did she say? Oops. I don't quite mean to that much in so again because I've got the water on the page it's just going to do its own thing which I think is cool so she said blues which we've put in there um, teals and purples um, do we have a teal here so I'm going to grab that blue because it's as close to the cyan as I've got and this yellow and that should make an awesome teal just add nope that's, that's still too I don't know uh, let's try that that's quite cool yeah I like that colour okay so remember you can mix your colours if you don't have it in your palette that's fine all you need when it comes to watercolours is um, a yellow a true yellow um, a true magenta and a cyan blue got all that you have the ability to do whatever you want so I've I picked out these palettes because I like working with them but um, they didn't have they didn't quite have a teal so we just made one so a teal is more of a um, a bluey it's like a richer it's like a green but it's not got too much yellow so that's the teal in there and what else did she say um, teal and purples so and have a colour swatch. So this we've got Royal and Mystic which is a purple. Ooh. Do you know what that is not two colours that I would have put together. So yeah and putting it on while it's wet um, is concerning me because normally I'd be thinking oh I'm going to get mud um, but actually it's blending okay because obviously we've got that tint of yellow and the teal but actually with it being um, a teal rather than a forest green um, there is just a tiny amount of 
yellow in that so it's playing nicely. Actually I'm just going to add just little splatters of yellow, not a lot, because I'm seeing hers and it looks quite nice. So just there it's got a little bit muddy. The thing is it's cool with yellow, I don't know why, but it seems to push everything else away. It's like a very magic colour. Right, so we've done that. I'm careful not to do too much because I don't want mud. Um, and I'm going to put some of this um, the mystic in as well because it's more of a fuchsia pur purple. Let's just pull that down. Ooh. This is really, really interesting. It's so different from what I normally do. It's kind of looking a bit like the page. Um, but I'm not completely sure it looks like hers either. <laughs> So I'm just going to get a bit more water on there, let it do its thing. So yeah, we've got our we've got our teals and our purples there. There we go. Right, so that's that. Some of it's pooling in different places, which I'm not overly keen on. But if you find that, I, like, I'm just not keen on how it's sort of put, blending together. That's fine, it's just because of the excess water, but you can just pick up the excess water so you don't have to panic. And I've gone for quite nice colours, so if that had muddied more than I wanted it to, that really wouldn't have been a problem. Right. So obviously I'm spouting a bit of my own sort of watercolour knowledge here. Um, but that's the thing, it's all been gradually picked up from various sources. So this is why having these books and things is good. Right. Um... Right, so she now says add salt and let dry. So I do actually have some salt in my stash. Okay, so that's actually quite good that I've been fairly heavy handed with the water. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Because um, the salt, you kind of need water on there for the salt to start absorbing it. So some of these heavier bits I might actually have to reactivate her hair a little bit. Okay, because I'm not quite sure how how much movement I'm going to get in her in her hair. Let's just wet this a little bit, just because I'm putting that salt on, so there needs to be something to absorb it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water, just so that we get some interest. So I like this style as well actually because this is another thing that helps you lose control. I love using like watercolours or I like doing techniques that it takes the control out of your hands. You just have to go with what happens. Right, so that's that and now I need to go and let it dry. Okay, so this has been drying for a couple of hours. I started filming yet another video. I've had my dinner which was a lovely roast. I will admit that I have just blattered this edge here with the heat gun and that bit there because they still had bits to dry and I was still, but I was fancying getting on with it. <laughs> so I have cheated slightly and I have taken the heat gun to it. Um, so now I'm just going to rub away the salt um, and hopefully that will have, you can sort of see lightly, slightly darker marks and slightly lighter marks where the salt has done its thing. So I am just going to continue to brush all of this off because I want to go, like I'm going a bit heavy handed there and I've sort of brought mark onto my page which is not ideal. So I'm just going to gently do that off camera and then so I'll be that's back. That's me taking my salt off. I don't know if you can see it but I have got a bit of a mark here but I'm not going to worry about it because I can see from looking at the tutorial that you know there's more paint going on and there's also a bit of a splatter at the end as well so that will very easily disguise. The next bit's quite interesting so she gets you to add more doodles in with your pencil. Now I have to say that had I not seen that I'd have been a bit nervous about doing that thinking oh I've started painting now I can't use my pencil. So which is stupid I don't know why I've never thought of that before. Um, so this is where I'm I'm just sort of like following some of the lines where and um, the colours sort of naturally divided it and then I think we're going to go in and um, sort of um, add to that um, with more colour. So oh, this is why even though, I mean I'm not going to say 
I'm a talented artist. Sorry. <laughs> the paintbrush is gone for. Right. So this is why it, it can be good to sort of get like obviously I've I did art at school. I am kind of like running my own business and selling my own products with designs that I have done. But I still think having books like these that you love have their place. Um, they can either teach you skills that you don't currently have or they can give you a different way of approaching something so that it can be a different technique. Um, using somebody else's technique um, kind of can push you out of your comfort zone a little bit and then you can discover discover new things. So I've kind of gone, I'm having a look, hers are a bit more sort of swirly, right? So I think, I think I'm happy with that, right? Um, and draw the details end of the head. I've actually did that at the beginning step. Okay, so then add another layer of darker, more intense colours to create the layer of her tutu and shadowing to her face. Um, and behind the head to make the updo like it's pushed back. Okay, right, that makes sense. So basically we're going to make it, although we've got lots of hair coming like this, we want it to look like it's been pinned up, but we do that by creating a shadow round about here. So let's start off with, I'm going to do the tutu first I think, because I feel a bit more confident um, with that. So I'm going to go in with similar colours, but maybe we'll just add a bit more intensity. So I had that, um, I think that's 70s eyeshadow, I lost my thing. I'm going to add some of the darker blue to that, just so that we've got a slightly darker tone. And then, so we're going to create shadows and things. So I know you'll have heard me say loads and loads of times that, you know, in our work we want to create a, a highlight, a shadow, a mid-tone and a highlight and that really helps to give your work definition and this will be why um, we're to go back in and do that. My Daniela has um, suggested that we do that. I'm also going to sort of bring, because I've got this smudge here, I'm going to bring a bit out here as well just because it's going to hide that mistake. So yeah, I absolutely think it's worth, and I, as I said, I really don't have loads. Um, I, it's not something that I do very often is buy myself art books because um, I have multiple ways of learning. Like obviously I learn by watching videos here on YouTube as well. I have taken classes um, for various things um, and I like to buy books as well. So and as I said, just this is possibly a good way of starting out the new year. It's kind of like I'm doing something in somebody else's style for a little while. Um, yeah, and it just it can help you approach things a little bit differently. If like there, I've gone way too dark, don't panic. I mean, that, you look at that there and it's like a big eye sort. There's water will help it to move and that you can dilute it that way. And you also can just like pick it up. So never panic. It's very difficult to make a mistake with watercolour, it really is. So I'm just going to get a bit more water on that again. Just to lift that. That's kind of stained a little bit, so that's fine. But we'll just work with that and bring those bring those pinks pinks in. So don't panic if um, something like that occurs. It's really not a problem at all. I'm going with the baby pink as well, actually. I can't remember what it's called. I've got my thing, bright palette. Um, best friend this one is. It is my best friend this one, you can tell because I've used it loads. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to bring in some more of that. Like so. So I am going to um, carry on doing this, but I think I'm going to do it on speed up because, as I said, I think building up the colour takes time. And then also what she said was basically we want to be creating shadowing around the head here. So although this hair is flowing, that it looks more like an updo. So um, I will get to that stage. Um, oh, it looks like... Right. And we're actually going to be adding salt again. So 
I'm going to pop myself on speed up while I do that and add the salt and then I'll be back once I have removed the salt from the second stage. I'm just going to make a couple of observations. So this is the project here and I've noticed that Danielle and her one she's got a lot more white space um, in her tutu girl. Um, so I think I've maybe been a bit heavy handed in the way that I've applied the colour. I've not been as loose as I could be so that's like let me know that I could have um, I'll maybe try it again sometime and loosen up but that's the whole point of working through an exercise. But I'm still going to go uh, carry on because I'm liking how it's looking but um, yeah it's obviously if I'm wanting to sort of perfect the sort of style that Danielle has had that's maybe something that I need to work on for next time. So the next thing she's got you doing is putting features in. She doesn't actually have you um, putting a wash of colour over the face but I fancy one. So I'm just going to pop a wash. Um, and so this is the Decadent Pies colour. So I'm not actually going to finish this tonight because um, after this stage there's a lot of doodling um, and doodling with white as well and I have learned from experience that if your page is really really dry that's the best time to do your white doodling um, and leaving it overnight is best anyway. So I'm just popping um, this colour here um, down, I don't have a little swatch card. I've been doing loads of crafting today, so goodness knows um, the way it's actually gone. But I'm just, um, not a huge amount because this isn't Daniela's style. Um, she's got her girl quite plain actually. It's mostly details with a mechanical pencil, so I just want to sort of put a wash down. The other thing I notice is that Danielle has lots of splatters. Um, I'm just having a little look. So she doesn't give you instructions for that, but I think that's because she has a much looser style as she is painting. And I really like the look of the splatters. So what I'm going to do now is let me just, I'm going to do splattered uh, splatters as I would if I was crafting. So I'm just getting a little bit of paper there just to sort of protect her face a little bit. And so those colors that are in the dress, I'm just gonna pick up what was on my pan and I'm gonna just add some splatters this way just I just feel that my project is a lot tighter um, than Danielle's is so which is fine because that's the thing everybody has different styles and when you take classes and things your take on it is always going to be slightly different um, but I do like how the splatter looks so I'm just adding mine this way so I'm not quite sure how um, Danielle does it isn't in her instructions on this of course it could be in some of the other bits but I've not read <laughs> the full book and also it's been that long ago since I did have a peruse and a read of it I can't exactly remember but yeah I'm just gonna go for it anyway let's put some more yellow bits up in her hair and also I had noticed again when I was taking the salt off that I've sort of smudged there a little bit so I'm just gonna add a bit of pooling of colour just there just to sort of hide my hide my mess that I made so yeah let's get a load of this splatter down and yeah, I'm happier I'm happier for the splatter and then I'm gonna let this dry um, so she has you popping in the details for the mechanical pencil on the face and then um, adding doodles so that's the stage that we will be at tomorrow and that's how it's all looking at just now I think maybe as well while I'm at it I'm just going to give her little bodice a second coat as well um, so I sort of had a bit of a 
mixed teal where I mixed my own. I think my palette's the opposite way around to how I had it before. <laughs> I'm just going to bring some of that in and bring the yellow in this side and just sort of strengthen up her um, little top like so. But I'm liking, definitely liking and do you know I've produced this book many times but not actually sat down and done any of the exercises so I think that might be what I'll be working on. I'll probably do some of the other ones. I'll not do them all on camera though because as I said I don't think it's fair. I think uh, if you like what you see and you want to give it a try that I'll put a link to the book um, on Amazon. I'm actually just going to flick with water on to her dress as well. As I said there's a lot more white spa space in Daniela's work and I've not achieved that um, I said probably because I mine's been a bit tighter so I'm maybe going to give it another try but I'm just going to just maybe lift it doing it that way. Right so I will be back when we're on the doodly doodly stage. Okay so I've let this dry already I'm just going to move my paints over so the next step now is to start adding um, in the facial features. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be brave and try open eyes. There's something that I particularly struggle with. So, uh, but Danielle has open eyes in hers. So I think we'll just attempt to go. That looks a bit freaky deaky to be honest. <laughs> so. I'm just for the sake of the video and not taking forever to do the eyes I'm going to go with my normal style of eyes which is just to have them closed like so. So she has you popping in the details with a mechanical pencil which is interesting again for me because I wouldn't be thinking about adding detail with a pencil I'd sort of automatically be reaching for a pen so I find that quite interesting. So this is just about um, adding some definition, adding some little doodles. Um, I've also noticed that, so we've got the markings of the hair coming in with the pencil, that she also sort of doodles around some of the splats as well and kind of maybe turns them into little mini flowers. And then obviously she doodles with a white pen as well. Um, I have a feeling that this doodling stage may sort of take a little, take a little while. So I think what I will do is um, pop it on fast forward while I do this this bit. So I'm kind of sort of following my own style sort of following um, the sketches that she's got on her little girl um, and sort of seeing seeing what occurs because the whole point of this is to sort of be working with someone else's style for a while. I'm working from her tutorial um, and we'll just see what occurs but this is where we start of start making some definition out of all of this. I'm also sort of going with the salt, having the salt on it has created various different lines um, so I'm going to sort of pick pick up those a little bit um, because you've naturally got your light and shade from that. The other thing, she's not given instruction for it was, but she's got sort of nice rosy cheeks that protrude, pro, protrude the actual um, face and I quite like that style quite a lot of my sketches the cheeks sort of come out with um, that so I think what I'm going to do now is just carry on this doodling stage on speed up and then we will um, come back to it with the big review <laughs> painting 
I'm just going to remove my washi. We'll get a sort of reveal. Um, I'm just going to stick this washi to the side of my desk because I'll not waste that. That will go into um, a journal. It'll be a start of a journal page now. That is tearing slightly which is not ideal if you do find it's tearing i tend to find if you pop your heat gun to it a little bit it will sort of lift without tearing quite so much but i think i just need to get the angle of it right but i'm pleased i'm going to show you a comparison between mine and danielle's in her book in just a moment yeah that one's tearing from that angle so do it from this side yeah. Never mind, I can chop this down anyway. But as I said, if you just gently um, use your heat gun, you can sort of slightly lift, lift it. The other thing that I have seen artists do, sorry, that's well stuck to my fingers. The other thing I have seen artists do is you can rub the paper um, with the back of a spoon and that can sort of pop that back down. Now this is probably, I've used washi instead of artist tape, but there we go. What I'm going to do is let's, I'm going to chop this down and then show you the okay, comparison. So there is the side by side comparison. Um, there are a lot more hints and tips on doing this project that I've not read out because obviously, um, get the book, get the book. So she's got some hints and tips here on um, how to improve things. One of the other things in this book that I love is at the back here um she swaps with an artist friend of hers um so with a, an artist called kelly and they sort of swap artwork and work in each other's artwork style which i think and seeing their insights on it that's really quite interesting but i genuinely love this book i will put a link to it on i got it from amazon i'm not affiliated in any way i'm just literally sharing it because it is my favorite art book i've got a few but this was definitely my favorite um so i'll pop it um down but anyway it has definitely inspired me because I've gone through, I've flicked through this book, it's one of my favourites, I've not done any of the exercises, I've not done the creative challenges, I am definitely going to sit and do these art challenges now, um, but I will probably share those on my Instagram because as I said it does require sort of listening to music as you're working through, so if you'd like to see progress on that follow me on my Instagram, it'll no doubt appear in my stories at some point. Um, but yeah, if you have enjoyed it here, please do consider liking and subscribing and I will be back with some more crafty goodness very, very soon. Okay, take care then and goodbye.